India's IT sector may be slowing down, but Keshav Murugesh thinks it'll double its size to $350 billion by 2025. The turnaround chief of mid-tier BPM player WNS gives us his game plan on this week's Managing Asia. <laughs> Keshav Murugesh is known as a turnaround guy. First at IT services company Sintel, then India's WNS, a global BPM company. Well, I like to do better and better. I set the benchmark high and I like to overachieve. He had taken Sintel from a market cap of $400 million to $3.5 billion before he was headhunted to helm WNS in 2010. So I got this call and somebody said, you know, the, a, a senior private equity person wants to meet with me. And I said, you know, for what? He said, you know, this person is in charge of a company called WNS. And I said, yeah, I never heard of this company <laughs> because we were not competing with them. Yeah. This was a BPM company and I was more in IT services. And I said, I'm happy to meet him for lunch just before I take the plane out. And he says, I don't know you, but I'm told that you are the right guy to turn around uh, WNS. And I said, why? He said, no clue, but everyone I ask says that you have you know, the right ingredients to do that. Anyway, we chatted and I said, I'm not really interested. So I got up, we shook hands, and I said, I'm going to catch my plane. And I said, what about you? He said, oh, I'll join you. I'm also going to catch my plane. And I said, you mean, uh, you know, uh, what's the story behind this? He said, look, can you see that BA plane there? Right? I said, yeah. He said, I just landed on that plane from London to meet with you, and I'm going back. That's when, you know, the penny dropped. I said, if somebody can make that kind of effort, fly nine hours to the U.S., and then fly back after, you know, two hours or whatever, uh, it made sense for me to look at it. Somewhere along the way, while it had led the industry, it had lost its way. And I said, that's something I could really fix, mm. you know, with a good team and some clear, you know, di uh, differentiation being uh, created. His differentiation was pushing beyond vanilla BPO to BPM or business process management. If you look at the BPM industry itself, we've been through three models. One was the first old model mm -hmm. of your mess for less, you know, really the wage arbitrage model. Then we moved to a model of value beyond cost, which was you yeah. know, really driven by companies like WNS in the earlier avatar. And now my big excitement and focus is all around the new transformation that we can create for our clients, leveraging the new models of social, mobile analytics, cloud, mm. artificial intelligence, and the whole area of robotics, you know, process automation. I think you know, that's, you know, that's creating a massive new opportunity for the industry and for WNS. Instead of traditional BPO services for human resource or finance, he's offering end-to-end -end vertical solutions for entire businesses whether in airlines, healthcare, or banking. So Keshav, you're the first in the outsourcing industry to come up with this end-to-end -end vertical model. What was the reaction you got when you announced the idea? Well, the analysts uh, and a lot of people actually thought we were crazy because they said, look, the business is accepting any model at this point in time. You guys exist to only help clients reduce their cost. So why are you doing this? And we said, no. The future of the BPM industry is going to be all about our helping our clients to transform themselves. Mm -hmm. It cannot be only about wage arbitrage and lower, lowering costs, but all about you know, helping them you know, be strategic in their thinking. And that's why we back the strategy. When you say your people are, will be specialized, how specialized will they get in helping your clients? Look, our people understand the sub-vertical elements of each business vertical. So whether it's you know, in banking, we have experts who can talk about cards, who can talk about retail, who can talk about wholesale, who can talk about capital markets. The same with the healthcare side, the same with the utility side. So the reality is, by doing this, our clients understand that when they're interacting with our people, they're interacting with people who know their business probably better than they know it, mm -hmm. based on unique experiences coming across many companies. Are your people trained to think like CEOs? That's the future. Everyone has to think like a CEO because the future, in my view, is going to be driven by people who can interact with a CEO or a CFO or a CEO who will know enough about business domains, enough about technology, has to be articulate, has to be able to make an elevator pitch in three minutes, and has to have commercial acumen so that the CEO on the other side sees value for themselves. And on our side, this person is creating value for WNS as well. 
Your turnaround strategy involved turning WNS employees from generalists to specialists. This is not something that happens overnight. Where did you start? Look, I'll tell you, you know, when I first came into WNS, you know, the, the first thing we needed to do was to really get every employee integrated into the vision for the company as well as to understand what our core values so were. So buy into your vision. Buy into the vision. And uh, to do that, uh, the first thing I did was do a Gallup kind of a poll to understand what employees thought about the management team. And I was shocked to find that they actually felt a little disillusioned because they felt cut off you know, from the strategy, cut off from communication, things like that. So what we did was bring in 40 you know, people from across organization, the organization, across every level you know, to participate. That itself you know, helped consolidate my position mm -hmm. as someone they could trust. Right? Then we did a five-day exercise in terms of just you know, creating the new you know, mission for the company. And we came out of that meeting saying we enable our clients to outperform with our passion for service and innovation. So very clear in mm -hmm. terms of what we stood for. And around that we said what should our differentiation be, mm -hmm. right? And we said our differentiation will be all around end-to-end -end vertical. When the whole market was looking at offering horizontal services, whether it was finance and accounting or analytics or contact center, whatever. We said we will offer insurance services, we will offer banking services, we will offer uh, healthcare services and whatnot. And that meant changing the DNA of our employees. Mm -hmm. You know, from being people who were told what to do to people who became thinkers mm -hmm. and who had to then go to the client and tell them, here's where your business is headed and here's what we think you should do. So did you have to hire specialized people from each specific industry and bring them into the company or did you train your employees within the company to be specialized people? A, a How long did the process take? Actually a combination of both because the reality is first and foremost the bulk of our revenues came only from Europe, right? Because of our BA lineage uh, you, you could expect and we said we have to diversify the revenue base. So the first thing we did was say that Let's go out and hire really top quality salespeople, both in North America and the Asia Pac mm -hmm. you know, region as well. So big investment behind that. Uh, and around this, you know, we also needed to make sure that we were walking the talk in terms of our domain specialism because there is no such thing as, say, healthcare. Mm. You know, while we generally call it healthcare, it is payer, provider, it is device, it is so many of these other things, and therefore we ha had to bring in people with that expertise at a so sub-vertical, very specialized, very specialized in expertise at a sub-vertical level across insurance, across healthcare, across banking, and you know really ensured that the client started trusting us much more because they said, you know what, we are interacting now with people who understand our business, mm -hmm. you know, better than we do, right? So we can trust these people. Their, their strategic orientation is all, all around really focusing on nonlinear models of growth, which means they're not ch asking to be paid based on the inputs they give, sure. but much more based on the outcomes mm -hmm. they provide. And because of the investments we were making at mm -hmm. the back end, Christine, it allowed us to dramatically grow both revenues and profitability mm -hmm. across this time. When you first joined the company, WNS has presence only in four countries. Today, it has a geographical reach of 13 countries, 52 delivery centers, and more than 30,000 employees. What's next in building that truly global footprint? The reality is that the, the market continues to be very nascent. You know, there is, you know, it is very underpenetrated. The demand for our services is still very nascent. It shocks me to see the kind of brands and companies that are even today, you know, dipping their toes mm. in this model. And therefore, the opportunity for a smart company like us to really, you know, grow dramatically is high. So from an organic point of view, we'll mm. continue to make the investments to grow. But at the same time, we will also, over a period of time, who knows, we may also look at something transformational. Mm -hmm. Maybe take out a competitor in the, in the medium to long term. You won't rule uh, that out? We, absolutely. Anything I mean, else out there you're eyeing? Who no, are you eyeing to take I mean, For us, you know, the opportunity in the market is so immense that we are excited with it. Our sales pipeline is extremely strong. Our people are extremely motivated, you know, with the kind of opportunity they are seeing, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, the ability to, you know, to constantly uh, recreate w oneself. So I see no reason why with this team we cannot get it Let's done. Let's talk more about this because you say you want to take out a competitor. Let's just say out of curiosity, which competitor would you like to take out if you had an opportunity? 
No, so at this point in time, I will say that we are focused completely on digesting the acquisitions that we brought in over the past year or two. But longer term, you know, I, I believe that as the market continues to grow and as the opportunity for us to, you know, continues to be seen the way it is, I see no reason why we will not rule that out. But uh, at this point in time, it is not on our horizon. Mm. You have substantial business in the U.S. A lot of your clients come from there. You feeling any impact from changes in the H-1B visa policy under the Trump administration? Fortunately, we are not at all impacted by the H-1B uh, you know, regime because we mm. do not leverage those visas at all. And in fact, from our perspective, the focus really is on the CXO community with our clients. You know, we, we just make sure that, you know, we are investing in all of the right models. We are, you know, front and center in front of them, helping them with the disruption that they are seeing in their, you know, kind of business models. And, and from that perspective, you know, we are also a job creator in each one of these countries. Like I said, we operate from 13, you know, countries. Only 21,000 of our 34,000 people are India-based. 13,000 are actually based in all these other countries, including the U.S. So from our perspective, no impact at all. Let's talk about earnings because WNS is, of course, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Last fiscal year, 2017, you pulled in revenues of 602 million U.S. dollars, net profit of about 88 million U.S. Where do you see this fiscal year, given Look, how sluggish growth is? We continue to be an outlier in the space. So our you know, revenue guidance growth for this year is in excess of 20%, while the industry is growing at 8 or 9%, so which is very positive. From a profitability point of view also, you know, we are 4 to 5 percentage points higher than any of our competition. While there is so much of disruption and noise around technology, around disruption, around you know, the political rhetoric across the world, WNS is actually at a lifetime high at this point in time in terms of our stock price. Our market cap is at you know, 1.8 or 1.85 billion at this point in time. And uh, we still expect that it is uh, undervalued, and that's the reason why our capital allocation program continues to kick in. Mm -hmm. We're still doing buybacks, and we're still looking at, you know, adding new capability through acquisition. Where do you see results this year? How much of growth are you looking at? I mean, that's the guidance, you know, we gave out. Our guidance actually is uh, yeah. talking about growth in excess of 20%. Will you be revising your guidance up? We will definitely fine-tune our guidance, you know, uh, at the October board meeting and we'll have to wait to see what the results are. Well, a lot of people can't help compare WNS with global IT rivals like Infosys and Wipro. Do you think you have what it takes to become a multi-billion dollar player? Yeah, so I think uh, from, a, from a positioning point of view, I think we're in a very different place already because the two companies that you mentioned are really IT services mm. players who are also doing a bit on the BPM side. Uh, and the reality is the market expectation is very different, right? Because uh, from, a, from a buyer's point of view, I think it is quite established today at this point in time that buyers, you know, want to work with IT services players for IT solutions and prefer working with business process management, you know, players for the BPM side. And that's the reason why we have continued to focus on being a pure play business process management player. Having said that, we have enough of technology and technology solutions and IP created within WNS to be extremely dangerous. So for us, being the most impactful partner to our clients is what matters. But you have dreams of becoming a multi-billion dollar company. Absolutely. When will we, we, we want to be a big company, a bigger company than this, and we want to be the most impactful uh, space. And I told you, I mean, uh, you know, we. We are looking at you know, acquisitions, we're looking at organic growth, and we, at, in the long term, we also look at transformational kind of acquisitions. So all of this is available to us in our, in our toolkit, and we'll wait and watch. Mm, what sort of time frame are you looking at? Look, uh, the reality is the market is so strong. So I think we have you know, at least five to 10 years to execute you know, on our you know, vision. Don't go away, coming up next. There has been some amount of negative news in terms of mm -hmm. job losses, this, that, and the other. On the BPM side, actually, there's been no you know, negative noise at all. When you look at IT global spending for BPM, it is slowing down. Do you see a pickup in tech spending on the horizon? Managing Asia will be right back. Hi, I'm Christine Tan, and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.